Hey everybody, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate the GRE, and I want to talk to you in this video about motivation. In fact, I call it knowing your why. Now, think about the components of doing well on the GRE. There are a lot of factors, right? Certainly, you have to know a certain amount of content. You have to actually know what's tested on the, you know, on the GRE. Uh, you have to know strategies. You have to practice. There's an element of time management. But one of the things not a lot of people talk about that is so crucial is ultimately your motivation, knowing why it is that you need to take this test in the first place. Why do you want to go to graduate school or business school? Because ultimately, only you can decide that. You know, I've received a lot of emails recently from students who say, Brett, I need help with my motivation. I need, I need you to help me, you know, do what it takes to create success on the GRE. And I'm like, look, I can teach you everything you need, but motivation has to come from in. You have to know your why. And let me show you how powerful your why is. I was attending a seminar recently with Darren Hardy. You may know who he is, uh, publisher of Success Magazine, incredible entrepreneur. And he gives this analogy, right? He talks about how uh, if he, maybe you're afraid of heights, for example, and he puts a little balance beam on the floor and says, hey, here's 20 bucks, right? So he says, there's $20 waiting for you if you simply walk across this balance beam. And it's pretty much laying on the floor, so that's easy enough to do. So you walk across the balance beam and you get your 20 bucks. Definitely worth taking that risk. Okay, now let's say we put that balance beam up five feet in the air. Would you still walk across that for $20? Yeah, of course. For $20, it's worth taking that little bit of risk. Maybe we raise the risk a little bit higher and we say 10 feet above the ground. Maybe if you're really afraid of heights, you won't do it. But for most of us, yeah, 20 bucks, sure, I'll walk across the balance beam, right? But now we throw it up a little bit higher, maybe you're not so sure. Well, that's because the reward isn't enough or the danger isn't enough. Your why isn't big enough. $20 is your why. That's why you're going to walk across. It's not big enough. He said, but let's say I put the balance beam across two skyscrapers, but your child is in the other building and the other building is on fire. Would you walk across the balance beam now? You definitely wouldn't do it for $20, but you would run across that thing to save your child. Your why is big enough. And it's the same thing on the GRE. You know, at the end of the day, it's a lot of time investment. It's a financial investment uh, to do well on the GRE. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the effort. I know you have other priorities. You have potentially a job. You may have kids. There are things competing for your interest. So what is going to motivate you? to put in the time, to put in the consistent hours for at least several weeks, maybe a few months to get that GRE your score you're looking for. So I encourage you to really think about that. Spend some time. You may be on the front end of your journey, right? And so this is a crucial thing to sit down and think about before you pull the trigger. Maybe before you even buy my course, certainly before you sign up for the GRE, certainly before you decide, you know, and I'm going after graduate school, you need to spend some time thinking about this. Now, if you're already in the process, maybe you're one of those people who are struggling a little bit with the motivation to put in the time and work it takes to do well on the GRE, uh, it's a great time for you to take stock. You know, it's never, it's never too late to decide to go a different route. I remember I actually started taking the LSAT for law school before changing course. I actually watched my dad uh, battle, battle heart disease. He ended up having a heart attack. He was a very successful trial lawyer. So I thought I wanted to follow in his footsteps. And I had to take stock and say, you know, what do I really want out of life? What do I really want out of life? Because um, is it worth it? You know, my dad made a lot of money, but it almost cost him his life at age 51 because of heart disease. And I decided I did not want to go to law school because of that. I did eventually decide I wanted to go to graduate school, right? I got my master's of international finance. It's never too late to shift course, but if you get serious about it, you also might be convicted and say, you know what? My kid's over there in a burning building. I am going to do whatever it takes. And so what might drive you? And what I found, there are four major drivers, right? One is just a complete dissatisfaction with the status quo. You have to do something different. You cannot take your current job any longer, your current situation, whatever it is, and that's okay. But I would say that's good as a catalyst to get you going. But what is it that you really want to attain? Why graduate school? Why business school? There are thousands of things you can do differently. Why this? You know, the second thing is sort of an intrinsic value. Ultimately, uh, you may just see that this degree is worthy of attaining in and of itself. 
to be educated, to put on a resume, to say one day when you're 60, I got my MBA, or I got my master's in social work, or I got my master's of education, and good for you. And that was actually part of the reason why I ultimately went back to graduate school myself. A third is kind of a fear driver. Maybe you are running from something. You're afraid to disappoint your parents, disappoint your friends. That can be a powerful driver to go do something to help you create more success. I have a lot, my dad was that way. He became one of the most successful trial attorneys. And in fact, he's the top 1% of trial attorneys. And I asked him one day, you know, what was such a big part of your, your success? He said, I was so afraid to fail. So he was willing to put in the hours and do whatever it took because he just admitted I, he, was a, he grew up very, very poor. I don't know if he didn't want to go back to that situation. It could be a powerful driver. But the other is that what you want to achieve, right? Kind of a fourth driver would be a utilitarian value, something that uh, this degree will be a means towards what you ultimately want to do. Maybe it's a higher rung in your company. Maybe it's a bigger salary. Maybe it's being able to get a job that you can't currently get because you don't have the piece of paper. And that could be a powerful driver as well. So those are just some ideas to get you thinking. But again, I encourage you, take stock. Take time right now. Again, if you're on the front end of the journey, if you're in the middle of the journey, if your GRE is just a couple of days away and you just need that motivation, keep your eye on the prize. Remember why you're doing it. Figure out why you're doing it. Sit down under a tree with the sun shining and just sit there with your journal and just think. Too often we don't take enough time to sit and dream and think about what we really want our life to look like, to create and be intentional about our life. And where will this graduate degree, where will business school, if you're going to go to business school with your GRE, fit into that plan? So I hope this is encouraging to you. Take that time. Be motivated. You're doing good things. And I'm here to help you. So with that... Spend the time doing that. Reach out to me personally with any questions you may have about the GRE. Certainly consider our course options. If you do want to set yourself up for a higher GRE score, your motivation, though, can be one of the biggest differentiators between your success and not on the GRE. May you go out and dominate the GRE.